Hello YouTube, thank you for tuning into my channel. And today's version of uh, Forms of Divination, we're going to be talking about the apple. Steeped in, very, steeped in a lot of traditions. Classic little apple. Now, <clears throat> some of the pros and cons is that most of the divination for the apple seems to be more effective when asking questions about love and protection and stuff like that. Think you've been hexed and you did a counter spell and see you want to see how it's working, you could probably check the apple uh, with some of these methods I'm about to show you. Questions about love? Same thing. Um, I mean, you could use the apple form uh, divination for multiple uh, multiple reasons. But when using fruit uh, as a form of divination, uh, it tends to be more accurate in my opinion, when it's about a divination or a question pertaining to what it's for, such as apples are good for health, love, protection, and whatnot, okay? And in folklore, most of the people who are doing this for answers have been traditionally women. One example would be peeling the apple from top to bottom in one long strip without breaking it, without cutting it, all right? Top to bottom, one long strip uh, thrown over your left shoulder, um, traditionally around Halloween or Samhain, uh, and then looking at the shape that it takes when it hits the ground. Now, if it breaks when you toss it or if it breaks while you cut it, it's pretty much not a good omen. Um, if you could do it, it says it's supposed to be good luck, but when you toss it over, over your left shoulder, <clears throat> you are to look at it and see what shape it's in and if you can make out a shape that's great if you can make out letters that's great that's gives you the initials of the person you're supposed to marry a more spooky one uh that's been done traditionally on again around midnight of Samhain or halloween is taking the apple and cutting it into nine pieces throwing uh one of the pieces over your left shoulder and eating the app uh, the remaining slices as you're gazing into a mirror now just a basic mirror i would probably use the black uh, scrying mirror because that just seems to be well works better for me and most people okay that's why it's black uh, not because it's evil but because it drowns out other colors and it gives you a a reflection that's easily can be morphed as you gaze into it as opposed to a, a more detailed face in a mirror that's hard for it to take shape because your conscious mind is focusing on your face. Yeah, but uh, anyways, moving on. Uh, <clears throat> the, what the story don't tell you is that you have to be very good at scrying, otherwise you're not going to see anything. So that's one of the drawbacks of that uh, divination. Now there's other forms. Now, a good form, uh, which is very rarely spoken of, is cutting the apple from stem to bottom. Basically like this. Okay. Now, it's very feminine. If you look at it, you don't have to use your imagination why it's considered very feminine. Okay? I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, where the, uh, the, the seeds lay within the cut apple gives you various answers. If you see one seed, but no seed on the other side, and then you see no seed on this side, for example. And you're asking mostly about, say, uh, a, a relationship. The presence of both seeds will indicate that it's a good possible great match. The fact that there's one seed on both sides uh, is a bad omen. It's basically saying that, you know, uh, uh, the person asking the question will be there, but the, their lover will not. That means that they could be dead or they could be uh, left at the altar or, or, or whatever. But in the end, the relationship is not going to work out. If there's seeds on both sides, like one seed and another seed on both sides, that means that the marriage will succeed, but there's going to be a drifting apart. If uh, one of the seeds are cut or both of the seeds are cut, it could represent that uh, the relationship will work, but not without a betrayal. Somebody's going to cheat. Uh, if both seeds are cut, that means both people are going to still be with each other, even though they both cheated. 
or or hurt the other person in some fashion. Now, these, this is abstract. You can add your all other opinions uh, and your own technique, but it's very important that if you do that, you already know what the answer will be. Otherwise, uh, subscribing and meaning to it afterwards uh, might not give an accurate reading of the first time. The, the, the line of thought is the more it's up here in your head, what method you're using and what you are going to interpret it as, the easier the universe, universe can give you an answer. Okay. <clears throat> um, so moving on, collect your apple seeds are great for uh, divination too. All right. Now I'm doing this improv, so I don't have a lot of apple seeds and I don't feel digging around. Now there's a nursery rhyme, which I have written down somewhere, but I never memorize it because I never use it. But I'm just letting you guys know it's out there. Counting the seeds in the apple you use, um, again, has a rhyme like how many children you might have. Now, that could be scary for some people because here's the thing. When you cut the apple in half, lengthwise, not, I mean, widthwise, widthwise, not length, widthwise, you, you basically you get this. You get a pentagram, a five pointed star and a circle, which is great for rituals and other things. OK, and a great way to hide the pentagram if you're living with somebody who's scared of the pentagram. Uh, anyways, there's five pocket seeds uh, for pockets for seeds. That's why you have that that star shape. Now, each pocket can hold more than one seed. So there's this rhyme. And again, I'm sorry, don't have it memorized. I, simple Google will say uh, for Rhyme of for apple seeds in divination, you'll probably come come across it just fairly, but um, I've not I've never used it. I'm just for the sake of the fact that it's a possibility. I'm giving that information here so you can, you know, look at it if you like. However, the apple seeds, I have used this and find um, find them to be very accurate. Using the apple seeds itself, take two seeds that are relatively wet. Uh, you don't have to be um, taken from the apple immediately. Uh, you could have it from, you know, a, a jar of apple seeds that you've collected over time. But as long as they're wet enough to stick to your forehead, okay, you subscribe one seed for yes, one seed for no, or plan A or plan B or for your decision, decision one or decision two, and you stick them on your forehead. The first one to fall is the answer. That's simple. Or you could use one of my favorite techniques. Give up, uh, get a, a total, an even number of seeds. I say even because it's more accurate, in my opinion, that if you have an odd, they will always have the possibility of being more yes or more no. So having an even one, you have a chance for it to be 50-50 yes, 50-50 no, which just means you need to ask again or use a different method. Draw a circle. Yes, bad handwriting, again. A little bit backwards, I guess, but I don't know if this would correct it in post. I don't know. Just anyway, you take say eight to ten seeds, apple seeds, and you hold them in your hand on a piece of paper or plate, whatever. You write yes or no, and you draw a line down the middle. Okay, and literally use that as a form of casting uh, area to cast your seeds. Take the seeds, you ask a question, you kind of shake them up. And just above it, drop them, and the seeds will fall down into the into the uh, plate. And if the seeds, you then you count the seeds. If the seeds are more seeds are on the on yes, then it's a yes answer. If more seeds are on the no, then it's a no answer. Okay, pretty simple. Um, the more seeds that are in, in that location, say there's five seeds. Uh, I mean six seeds on yes, and three seeds on no, and one of the seeds bounced off the circle so you don't count that. So you have more yes than you have no, but you have a lot more yes than you in the no than no than you have a more intensity of more of a positive answer that this is yes than it is a misreading. Uh, that simple. Um, and other techniques, uh, just throwing it out there, which again I've never used this one. But bobbing for apples, um, there's People that believe it's been the, it's been a game for like ever, and then uh, some people believe that it, it actually came from a novel. Okay, because the first time in written history, 
uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it was uh, found in a story, in a novel. Okay, so a lot of people think it was an invention. Um, I don't subscribe to that. I believe it is an ancient technique for fun. And what they would do is that they would write a symbol that represented somebody or maybe their name on the apple. <clears throat> do that multiple different apples with different people and so forth and have it in literally in a bucket of water and they would bob for the apples and whichever they could grab would be basically a form of divination. However, that has you know, been lost to time and it's now more of, fun, more of a game than anything. But just putting that out there, okay? Um, different forms of divination for the apple. Um, just trying to expose people to things that people might not have been exposed to. So um, my favorite form of divination using the apple is the yes and no method by casting seeds, kind of like casting lots, okay? And to me, that has been the most accurate uh, form of divination with the, with the apple for me. Uh, I know some witches had, did the uh, Halloween, um, which now this don't have to be done, done, done on Halloween. Of course, it's done on Halloween because uh, high holidays like this, like like, like that, like Samhain, uh, and in between times have are have been historically great days to do divination because of the in between times. Okay, um, but it can be done anytime. So thank you for watching, and I will. Try to get uh, add more to this uh, divine uh, list of multiple versions of divination at a later date. Uh, please like and subscribe. Click that little bell so you can be notified that I upload videos. Uh, thank you.